Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, we are going to talk about generic class in C Sharp. So generic class, as the name suggests, it is supposed to have a generic implementation, but generic mainly focusing on the type, not necessarily the logic. So for example, there are certain operations which are very generic and not specific to a type. And in those kind of operation, it would make sense for the class not to have any implementation specific to a specific type. Instead, keeping a generic type and then based on the user need, it can use a specific type. And generic classes are very, very important in C Sharp. We might not be using generic classes implementation as much, and I have not used it a lot. There are situations where I have used generic classes or created my own generic classes, but that's a rare occasion. Whereas generic classes implementation is critical because of how generic is used in C Sharp across the board. And one of the biggest example of using generics is in collection. And collections is something we are going to discuss in the future video. But let's talk about generic class. So as I mentioned, for generic class, the main intention to have a very generic implementation of something. So for example, here, let's say we have a class called item printer. And the goal of the item printer class is nothing but to print a particular item. And the item can be anything. Printing is, in most cases, printing is very generic. It is printing something. So as long as the type that we are dealing with provides the value of printing, it can be printed. So now let's try to see how we can implement the item printer as a generic class. So for, as I mentioned, here the goal is to have a generic type, not necessarily generic implementation. So for defining a generic class, we have to, after the class name, we start with this bracket and then we provide a type. And here we are talking about single type. So we are saying for any type which is passed, this is the class and this will be the implementation. Now the classes can take multiple types and the normal practice for multiple classes is starting with T and then TH and so on and so forth. Now for our case, we're just dealing with a single class or a single type, so we're just going to use T. And let's say first, we want to add the item into the class, and then finally we're going to print it. So we can have a public void set item, and it's going to be T item, and we can define a private item here and here we can do this dot item is equal to item so we're going to set the item incoming item to the local variable so now we are setting this and then finally finally we can have an implementation called public void print item and here we can just go ahead and do console dot right line this dot item and now we de defined an item printer which has set item and print item and it is taking a generic type so the type is not defined yet now how do we define the type Essentially, when we create the instance of this item provider is when we are going to provide which type we want to deal with. So for example, let's say var 
int item is equal to new item printer of int so now we have a int item provider and we can say int item dot add set item forgot the name so we can say int item dot set item and here we can pass let's say uh, five as the number and then similarly we can say int item dot print and now if we want to do similar thing with the string we can just say var string item is equal to new of item printer of string and then we can say set item of test and then finally we can say print item and similarly we can have other data types and we can also have complex data type like our own class so here if we define a record type let's say data which takes string name we can potentially create and here we can say new of item printer data problem here okay. has to be a public record now we can have an item printer of data and then similarly we can do just like any other type we defined before record item dot set and here we can say new data test record and finally we can say record item dot print item though the print implementation has to be modified to handle all sort of data type but this is at a very high level how we can declare generic types and generic types can also have interfaces which is generic interfaces so we can extract an interface for this one and let's add it to the current file and you can see we can have an interface i item printer which is also generic and it will define the contract and then the class is just implementing those contracts so this is at a very high level how we can define or implement generic classes. And as I mentioned, in a real life scenario, you will not be encountering situation where you have to implement generic classes, but it can be really handy at times to use generic classes. Now, as I mentioned earlier for generic classes, we can have multiple types this can have th and this can have th second item and here similarly it's going to be th and th and then here we can have th of th second item and then here let's change this implementation here and can have private th second item and we can say this dot second item is equal to second item and here similarly we can have console dot right line and here we can do dot item here this dot second item 
So that's what we want to do. So as you can see, we can have multiple generic type for a particular class as well as interface. So if we change that, of course, we have to go and change it here. So we can provide, and at this time, we can have a different type here. So this can be long. Here, this can be end. So this is going to be, let's say one. This is going to be so 10. And here, this can be data and let's say string. So here, it's going to be this and then test. So as you can see, we can mix and match type based on our requirement. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. Uh, generics was, discussing generic was very important because once we understand the very basic implementation of generic and why it is needed, it basically needed to provide you a generic type implementation so that the caller can decide a specific type, which, whichever type the caller wants to deal with. And this opens up the opportunity for discussing things like generic collection, which is one of the most important topic, if not the most important, but one of the very important topic of C Sharp because understanding collection and generic collection is critical for day-to-day -day programming. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel and if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.